Okay viewers, welcome back to computer networking classes. In previous videos, we had discussed about how sending rate and all these are uh, congestion techniques are being controlled. In this video, we will be talking about congestion avoidance techniques. So here, how congestion is being avoided is that, firstly let's say there are 1460 bytes and congestion window is totally of 1460. Uh, 14400 means 14600 bytes so there are 10 segments are being sent within an rtt so so when should linear increase end so as you can see that each arriving act decreases increases the congestion window size by 1 by 10 so as we can say see that by slow start that uh, if an act is arrives if an act arrives then it will increase by 1 MSS so here the congestion window will increase by 1 by 10 MSS so where this increment will be end so we will discuss by uh, that by this FSM so here as we can see that in initial uh, in initial condition CWND means congestion window will make um, will be made 1 MSS and SS thresh will be described as some value and duplicate act account will be zero now as slow start increases a packet will be uh, packets will be probed and band bandwidth will be probed and uh, packet numbers will be increased and congestion window will get increased here in congestion avoidance as we had discussed that it will increased by MSS by congestion window means MSS by uh, CWNT so it will get increased here now if there is any duplicate no, duplicacy in acknowledgement so it will get added and if duplicate accounts will be equals to 3 then it will be shifted in fast recovery mode here it needs to have to make decision that whether it there is timeout if there is an act or there is an duplicacy in acts so fast uh, recovery will uh, take account of that and if there are new acts it will go into congestion avoidance state and if there are timeouts there is need to make another slow start and if there is duplicacy in acts the congestion window will be simply increased to mss times and in congestion avoidance technique in this state if there is a timeout it needs to go to slow start so <coughs> sorry uh, so basically what is fast recovery is that in this it will uh, manage the congestion window at the time of duplicate act it will simply increase by the number of MSS and if there are timeouts then it will you can see that if there is timeout then it will make SS thresh to be congestion window by 2 and again congestion window will be increased by 1 and slow start will begin so as you can see that there are TCP Reno and Teho techniques so in Reno there are uh, as uh, there are slow start starting from SS thresh value previous SS thresh value which is equal to CWND by 2 okay so this is new technique TCP Reno and in SS thresh there is no fast recovery mode the value will simply start from 1 so this value is 1 so as you can see that SS in SS thresh slow start will increase from 1 but in TCP Reno it will increase from SS thresh value so what is additive increase multiplicative decrease is AIMD it is used by TCP and it is similar to TCP Reno technique so this forms sawtooth uh, feature for a graph so as you can see that TCP congestion control consists of linear increase in congestion window of 1 MSS <coughs> per RTT and then a halving uh, of CWND on a triple duplicate act event so this is fast recovery event so TCP Reno is used so it forms sawtooth event 
so what is fairness so uh, let's consider an example where ktcp connections each with a different end to end path but all passing through a bottleneck link so this we can term as bottleneck link with transmission rate rbps bits per second suppose each connection is transferring a large file there is no udp traffic passing through the bottleneck uh, bottleneck link uh, a congestion control mechanism is said to be fair so here is the definition is the congestion control mechanism is said to be fair if average transmission rate of each connection is approximately r by k so equal share should be uh, having for each tcp connections this is called fairness for tcp so here let's uh, for an for an example suppose that there are two tcp connections one and two and uh, they have to uh, send data from one opening so this is bottleneck opening or data network so as you can see that if tcp is <coughs> is to share the link bandwidth equally between the two connections so server will try to uh, achieve equality means all tcp connections uh, will achieve or share same bandwidth so it is to share the link bandwidth equally between the two connections then the realized throughput should fall along the 45 degree arrow as i told you that uh, there should be an equal share for all the tcp connections so for the case where two tcp connections are there so the line should be 45 degree means equal bandwidth share r by 2 so from this diagram we can say that there uh, there is a tendency for the server or sender to or receiver that it is sending a rate its sending rate is uh, approximately equal to r by 2 so in this way fairness of tcp is done now coming to udp so as we can say that uh, see that there are no fairness conditions in udp or congestion techniques uh, congestion control or avoidance techniques there are no such thing in udp so udp ach uh, achieves or acquires fairness as it will simply drop the packet so udp are not being fair they do not co uh, cooperate with the other connections nor adjust their transmission rates appropriately so when running over udp applications can pump their audio and video into the network at a constant rate and occasionally lose packets so this is the form uh, by which fairness is achieved in udp it simply lose packets because tcp congestion control will decrease its uh, transmission rate in the face of increasing congestion while udp sources need not it is possible for udp sources to crowd out tcp traffic so in this way module 2 is over so see you in next module which is basically uh, on network layer till then thank you